Mitchell, South Dakota. This is a little town in the middle of the plains, just like any other little town in the middle of the plains, except for one distinguishing feature down at the end of that block. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. I am George the Antique Nomad, and I am in front of the Corn Palace, the world's only Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota, which is an entertainment pavilion inside. A never ending, always changing kaleidoscope of corn in scenes, in letters, in graphics. They've been doing this for over a century now. It's really fun. Let's go take a look for a minute. Free admission, that's right up my alley. So, you get the corn theme. This tile work is mosaic tile from the 60s or 70s. Obviously, we are in corn country. This is great because I have to eat gluten-free, so corn is on my list. <laughs> this place is an arena. If you walk up inside here, you'll see even more decorations in corn. Look at all this. Currently, it's open for basketball. NAIA Women's Basketball Division II National Champion. Wow, I had no idea. Go team. Here's an old look back at the Corn Palace. Here it is in 1892 with minarets. And yes, every single piece that you see is an ear of corn, cut and shaped in some way. This was a real attraction in the late Victorian and early 20th centuries. This was not the only place there were palaces. There's the Sioux City Corn Palace in 1891. But Mitchell's is the only one that is still here. They had an exposition here, and that's what brought everybody. And the Corn Palace was the result. Here it is in 1904. The swastika is Sanskrit or Native American for good luck at that time. Did not have the association with Hillary. Down the road from the Corn Palace is this antique mall. And this is a place I like to stop. I've been here once or twice before. There's also Palace City coins and collectibles next door. So there's a couple things to see here in Mitchell. And I find that the Plain States can have really interesting stuff. There just weren't as many people, so you've got to pick your spots. But this one, I found a great Lucite lamp the last time I was here. I'd be hard pressed to fit it in the car this time, so hopefully I'll find little stuff. Well, this place is very cool. The way it's set up is really interesting. It's got essentially rooms. I like this false front here. It looks like the false fronts at Lafayette, Oregon, where the antique mall I ran was. You've got the corn on the back spelling out the harvest. The Grecian columns. You've got a brick facade. This is fun. Somebody put a lot of effort and thought into this and made it really interesting and it'll have a good atmosphere. And I do see some things that I think I can buy. There's also some things that are really specific to this area. This is rosemead pottery, and these were done in North Dakota. So this is where they're going to be the most collectible, but it's a good name. You can see the label on the one windmill that's missing its propeller. These little sugar and cream sets are as well. I like the silver fade set. It seems quite out of place on this very handsome country hutch from the 1870s. But I might be able to give it a new home. I wonder if they do a dealer discount. Caster set. Fenton custard. A nice old pattern glass set. 
That's only $80. That's actually tempting now that people are interested in this because of the glow, but the early pattern glass, you have to really check it. Some of it doesn't have a lot of uranium in it, and it doesn't glow strongly. Something I really equate to with this part of the country are all of these old advertising crockery pieces to remind you to trade at these places. Elliott Grocery here in Mitchell, the Fair Store in Avon, South Dakota, Interstate Lumber Company, some of these are going to be Watt Pottery. They were quite well known for doing this. In fact, you can see this batch here are Watt Pottery because of the decoration. But lots of companies did these. You see the spatterware and spongeware too. Here's a bunch more of the Watt. There are people who specifically collect the old advertising, but you really see a lot of it from the plain states. These I didn't expect to see. <laughs> these are pretty cute. $22.95 each. These were big tourist souvenirs. 1960s, 70s. Probably a little later than that, too. $40 for the coconut lamp in the top of leaf shade. That's not bad at all. Mm. Look at my house. I always associate these old oil lamps with plain state living as well. Bunch of cameras. I'm pretty set for cameras right now. Although I like this box for Birdie from Fuji. I think it's just the box though. Cowboy boots, there's a selection. Signs over here, a few old beer signs. Only $20 for the Coors, but the decal on the top is not in good shape. Natural light here. I just sold one of these recently. What do they have on theirs? About what I got for mine, $90. That's a neat refrigerator dish. There was a dinnerware package that matched that with the plants. Okay, here we go. This is an egg cup. I think it was made in Japan. Six dollars, I think I'll take that. Very cute. Being out in the prairies, we do see Francoma and we see some nice orange clays here. I like this bottom for a warmer. I'm looking for older or more unusual designs though. This is cute, a kitty pinball game. $250, it is the State Fair, and this is going to date to probably about 1960 or the late 50s because we've got cowboys, strongman baby. They've said to ask for assistance, so I'm not going to play with it, but it is really fun. And it looks like it's mainly all there. It needs one new rubber band. Every Life magazine, you could buy one for anybody's birthday. If they were born the week that this came out, and this one's got an interesting cover, Baby Doe Tabor, the West Silver Queen. She had a very interesting life, married a much older miner. These vintage football pieces look like something from the 70s made in Japan. I'm sure I saw these in friends of mine's rooms when we were growing up. This one's got a little damage on the cheek, but this one's in pretty good shape, and it's $14.95. I think that might just have to come with me. They can keep the pencils. Oh, no, look at the back. Yeah, see, these things, the paint was not made to adhere well in that period. They were really cheap. What a cute display of children's books these are. Four little puppies. My mother has that one in her collection. And appropriately, corn for the palace. Here's a really pretty dresser box. This would have actually been for jewelry, as well as other little trinkets and accessories. This will date to sometime around 1905. You can tell by the way they're dressed. These are the Gibson era. Nice press. It's a faux leather cover. And it's priced at 59, which to me is about the right price for a piece like that. The place just has a lot of fun categories and things are really, really well displayed. It's really easy to find your way around here. They've got a lot of cute little toys here, the little helper pastry set. That's a great graphic from about 1930. For $80, we've got this train station here with the waiting room. And it looks like it's some sort of a music box. Hmm, curious. I don't think I've seen that feature on this before. Maybe it makes a train whistle. Here's the Batman, an old Ben Cooper costume, $25. That's pretty cool. I imagine that this is probably worth something because it's a G.I. Joe tent from the 80s. 1982. 
I think this used to be a JC Penney's, they said, and it makes sense because it's very similar to the floor plan of the old Seattle JC Penney's, which is also an antique mall. Used for easy shopping at Woolworths. It'd be fun to have another one of those sets. It's got the old Woolworths diamond pattern. A lot of furniture down here. This is going to be more overflow and furniture and furnishings. I see all of these really cool soda glasses, strawberry shortcake, the usual suspects, hubcaps. So this place just has a lot to look at. I wish I had more time to spend because it's a really good store. And I definitely recommend if you get in the area uh, to take some time because it's a fun place to stop and the last place to stop for a really long time. Funny how sometimes you find things when you're going the wrong direction. I just came from there. This one has a chip. But it's interesting. I wonder who made that. It seems professionally done. Gosh, good price too. Too bad about that, Nick. They've just got a little of a whole lot of everything here. All these different categories. There's tons of housewares. Some are pretty basic. Some would still be functional. And some of them are collectible. So it's the kind of place that you can just pick through for a really, really long time if you're so inclined. And I'm sure if you made a big pile, it would make you a deal. I kind of like this piece here. These are old enough now, these little storage boxes with the ventilation, 20 bucks. She's cute with the decal from the 1940s applied. The old thermos ones are going to be worth money because they say thermos on them. Oh yes, I remember the day my dad backed over my red trike that looked just like this because I recognized the patterns in the seat and the footrest there. It turned out alright though because I ended up getting a real bike then. Dentist chair, look at this, $115. That would be fun to recane and put in some sort of an oddities museum. You have the padded seats to which you will be shackled. No. Oh. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. I know some people are afraid of the dentist. And back then, well, they didn't have the sort of pain deadening that we have now, so you can see why, but at least you got to sit in a really neat chair. Wonder Horses galloping in our direction. 1950s and 60s. This guy here, only $29.95. That's actually a pretty good price. Made in Minnesota. There's a guy in Kentucky who has a bunch of these chasing each other through the woods on his property, which I find very amusing. I like the old airway manuals, if they have anything in them, but it looks like these have been emptied. It says who the flyer was. Dr. Gordon K. Magnuson. Sounds like every hero on every drama of the early 1960s. But there's a couple of old catalogs. 1982. Ooh, look at that look. and pleather. Apparently scowling was really popular in 1982. It wasn't a very happy year apparently. Maybe because interiors looked like this. Although this set here now, I would own that. And then there was 1992. Can you believe this is 30 years ago? Boxy skirts and plaids. Color blocking. Oh yes, this is very early 90s. I hear that some of the early 90s are starting to come back in, but I don't think it was necessarily the stuff that they were selling mom at JCPenney's. Ah, uh, remember those dresses. So funny to see that profile coming back. I'm used to seeing these along the Ohio River, but we've got a bunch of these very cute 1930s vanities with benches here in the 132. Ooh, wow, this one's only $70. 99. Not sure on this one. 99 again. Good prices. 29.95 on this lamp with a really great base, but I don't have room for it and I don't like the shade. The thing about this place is if they have one, they have a pile of them. Look at the good shade, this lamp I like, $79.95. If I had room for this in the car, I might be buying this. Look at this great shade. It's fiberglass, it's a little damaged though, so I guess I'm off the hook, but 
that is appealing. This place really is, it's been here 25 years, I guess it really is the center of antiquedom in this part of the state of South Dakota. These panels are good, early 70s. And then back in here they've got a bunch of architectural salvage, which is really nice. If you need these trim pieces, you know, they're $12 each. Now you got to get here to get them, but boy, the prices are right here because a lot of this stuff has come out of homes in the north, so it's priced right. And this little set of chairs with that original 50s printed top table, really cute. And this will pull out to a nice breakfast size with the four chairs, it's $2.45. That seems like a very fair price for someone to take home and have a lot of fun with. And if you didn't like the dentist chair, we can always put you in a wheelchair. There's one of those. This one's only $65, but it needs new caning. $40 for the quilt top. That's an interesting one. Fun little Lazy Susan for $18.95. California, a couple of different companies use that square lettering. Happy Chalkware, $10 for the pair of poodles, that's a pretty good price. Only $1.95 for these on the plaques. $12.95 for the three piece set, so those prices are really very good. And wall pockets, around $20 each, which is also fair, and the bananas, can be hard to get, and the bananas could be treasure craft, but I don't think so. No, the coloration is wrong in the back. I like the calico pitcher here for $20, hiding in the back. I finally sold my stick and ball screen, so here's another one. And a lovely piece of oak furniture, that circa 1900s secretary with the mirror. Back here is a neat shelf of Halloween items. Just don't see these very often. The noisemakers are $28 each. Pretty much everything in there is, and I don't blame them. And here's the entire kennel ration set. You see pieces of this at thrift stores and estate sales. This is all of it together. You've got the dog and cat shakers, the two wall pockets, and the cream and sugar bowl. They have 75 for all six pieces. Rock spring water. She looks like she's having fun and that she's going to shoot off into space on that thing. This is Don, perhaps the most well-known of our Atkinson Fox's prints from the 1920s and 30s. He, like Parrish, was successful in his time. He worked under several different names, so you can find items of his that are not marked with his name. And then this one is $20, but look at the wonderful color and look at the frame. I mean, the frame is not pie crust, but it's got that great blue color. That seems like a very good price, all in all. Co-op member, this would be from a farm. It's fairly thin, but it is real, $15. Henry Moore Madonna bronze, $185. That's tempting because Henry Moore is such an important sculptor. I might have to see if they would be interested in an offer on that. The sportsman's ashtray is a less often seen Holt Howard piece, and I like that it's got the tag. 65 on that. $62 these days is not a bad price at all on the candy display. Speed Queen Washers and Ironers. Authorized dealer, that's from about 1950, $125. They had stuff like that in all the car dealerships and appliance stores for all sorts of different products. You don't see them much now though. Here's another Rosemead piece, this little flower frog, very cute for $22.50. There's an obscure plain state pot in the back there, that vase with the two different spouts and it's really Interesting shape, a big twist. It's got a very clear label that says Milton Vale, Kansas Potteries. That is a hard to find piece. It's $50. I can understand why. I also like the toothbrush holder in front of it. I see more interesting razors in this part of the country, it seems. The Dutch design is kind of neat on that one. I'm going to turn this way so you can see them in a different direction. The Bird for 145 Yankee Cutlery, that is really unusual. The Dutch Mill is unusual. All from the era before safety razors put these things to rest. 
console pole, eight dollars, and the maker of this is Brush. The Harbor Bar in Sioux Falls, local interest piece. This is Franciscan's El Patio pattern, twenty dollars, priced about right. Olympia, well, see Olympia. The parent company bounced around, so there is some Olympia stuff in this part of the country, but it's more popular where I am. Ten dollars a pad. I think that's about what I would get, though. I sell only about 20 miles from where the was originally brewed. Now, the Rosemead Fawn is one of their most common pieces. It's only twelve dollars, but it's had some problems on the point there. There's a nice stamp for you, North Dakota Rosemead, and you can see the color of the clay. This is a nice Roseville piece, Carnelian from the 19 teens and 20s. That's the Roseville mark at that point. The Georgian Lovebirds powder jar is really pretty, but it had color on it that has been worn away by miscleaning and other problems, so that won't do. Franciscan Coronado. I used to do a lot of business in that pattern. I still like it a lot. Disney advertising panels for Hostess. Oh yes, like Twinkies and that sort of thing. Very handsome Fenton orange tree footed bowl, the very large footed fruit bowl, $4.95. I don't know if you can get that for it these days, but it is a pretty piece. I like this old Senko scientific balance scale with the marks in the middle, 1920s or 30s. This is $48. That does not seem like a bad price at all. Blanco Ruby Apple, 20 bucks, that's about right. This is cute from the 30s, it's like a silhouette, but it's ceramic. When Knighthood was in flower. 1930, Henriksen Studios, Minneapolis, nine bucks, I like that. Yeah, I'll take that. Japanese, 50s, 60s painted pieces, transfer pieces, but then there's this. This is old ivory. This is from about 1910. They only have nine dollars on it. It's not as expensive as it once was, but there are collectors for this. Silesia, I believe, is in Poland now. It was part of the Prussian Empire at one time, and I think I'll get that for that price because I think they're still worth about 20 to 25. Things from South Dakota. Nineteen twenty-four is pretty late for these calendar plates. I did not realize they did them as late as that. And then this is Art Deco here. I like the old advertising. You can usually find it for a town that is familiar to you or your family. The pink and green look good together. But of course we know why people are after the green. Prices on these are good. They're mainly Depression era. Of all of them, the vase. I think is the deal of the group because it's something different and it's a shape, so I think I'll take that one. These were all made by Porcelier from Ohio. Sometimes they have the big infuser with the metal piece and everything that goes right in the top if it's a dripolator. There's the Porcelier mark. This one unfortunately is as is. This one sells the best for me because it's exotic birds and it's Art Deco. And then this one is cute in a western display. Well, these owls have a break, unfortunately. Otherwise, they'd be coming with me. And I'm enjoying taking my break in Mitchell, South Dakota, shopping around. I don't have a lot longer to stay here, so I wanted to tell you really quickly, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, please hit that bell to be notified if you're in, interested in future videos, that's the way to do it. And if you are not a subscriber, please do, because that's how you can be notified of future videos. And we'll go back to this one now. We have entered the Valley of the Dolls. The folk doll marionette is cute. Composition ones are nice. Pitiful pearl in the box there. And look, a Natalie Wood paper doll. Some bigger toys up here. Okay. 
easy bake oven. I've sold those before for about 10 to $15 more than they have on that one. I don't have room to take that. These models, if unbuilt, can sell for about 75 to 95 each, as these are priced. Love the old beauty bar that's out of the 1930s or 40s cosmetic counter. One of our dealers had this as a display in Washington for a while. Well, what a fun place this is. I am glad I got to come back. And I will be back again, I'm sure. Here's their official name, Second Impression Palace. So this is the place. There's their address and information, even their website. And I think you'll have a lot of fun if you're headed through here. This is a great place to stop. Well, I had fun at Second Impression Antique Mall in Mitchell, South Dakota. They had some nice things. It's such a clean, well-organized, attractively laid out store that it's just a pleasure to come and shop. And I was especially happy because I found some cool things, a really neat old scale, and then other things more along the line of mid-century modern that would not be so popular in South Dakota, but should do well when I get them to the coast. So I was happy with this stop. It's good to see all of you. I'm George the Antique Nomad. Please check me out on the social links and check out all the other things that you can do on my channel. There's information about memberships. There's information about appraisals through my website, theantiquenomad.com. I hope to see you somewhere here or elsewhere in the antique and vintage world soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.